Assalamu alaikum. Do you guys hear me? Yes. Salam. Yes, we hear you. Okay, so if you guys remember, we've talked a little bit about the principles of uh, invasive ventilation, and we spent some time talking about variables. And also we talked about type of breaths. And we said we have control variables that give us the type of ventilation. And we said that there is three control variables, but we mainly use two. We don't use the third one. And when we say pressure control, we mean that the clinician, the care provider, determine the pressure and the volume remain variable. And when we say volume control, the clinician set the volume and the pressure is variable. When the volume is variable, it gives us volume problem or volume trauma. When the pressure is variable, it gives us pressure problem or barotrauma. We also talked about conditional variables. One minute, please. So we also said conditional variables. And we said the conditional variables are of two types. The clinician set, the set, and usually it's at the bottom of the screen you see it. And it's lots of variable that determine, set, or controlled by the healthcare provider. And also we said it's independent variable because it's not affected by anything. And we said there is another variable, conditional variables, called dependent variables, or it's the measure of the other. And usually it's on the sidebar of the screen. And it's called dependent because it dependent depend on the set variable and the interaction of the patient with the variables. We also said that we have phase variables. And the phase variable determine when the ventilation start, when the ventilation stop, and when it's sustained, whether it's a PIP or it's a pose. And we said also that the control variables give us the type of ventilation. And we said that we have two types of ventilation pressure control or pressure limited and volume control or volume limited. And we said as intensivists, we use only pressure control. We rarely ever use volume control and the volume control is mainly used by anesthesia because it's easily manipulated. And because the anesthesia is short time, it won't give us much of problem. However, because we ventilate long time, we use pressure control. And we said when we use volume control, then we get pressure problem or paratrauma. And when we use volume control, uh, pressure control, we get volume problem or volume trauma. And we also said conditional variables are independent and dependent. We also said phase variables, which is start, sustain, and end of ventilation. 
And we said we have three types of breath, spontaneous, assisted, and mandatory. And we said the combination of conditional variables, phase variable and type of breaths give us the modes of ventilation. And the mode is the way of interaction of the ventilator with the patient. Do you guys understand this? Or you have a question? I know the nurses got a practical session, so probably they are a little bit more or less confused than before. Any questions so far? Please ask question if you are confused. <clears throat> Any question? Okay. So the modes of ventilations, as we said, affected by conditional variables, phase variables, and type of breath. Types of ventilation, as we said, is affected by control variables, and there are two types, volume limited or volume control, and pressure limited or pressure control. Now, the, let's say, have some discussion about the volume control. The volume control in volume control, the clinician, as part of setting the ventilator, controlling the everything but the pressure. So the clinician set the peak flow rate, the inspiratory time, the IE ratio, the flow, the tidal volume, the spiratory rate. You put the PEEP and FI2 and inspiration end. And once the inspiratory time set has been elapsed because we have tidal, we have inspiratory time. And you can see we did not set the PIP, okay? Because the PIP will be variable because it's a volume control. Question? The volume limited, as we said, we said the tidal volume, the inspiratory time, the IE ratio, and the tidal volume and the IE ratio will determine the PIP. If we increase the peak inspiratory flow rate, this will decrease the inspiratory time or uh, sorry, tidal volume or in inhale tidal volume, increase exhale tidal volume and decrease the ratio. The airway pressure, the peak, plateau and mean. So when we look at the graphics, and you guys remember the graphics are a parameter against time, and it shows the trend. And usually we see on the monitor about three to seven breaths on one screen. So when we have volume control, the pressure become variables, and therefore the pressure appear um, on the screen as a result of interaction with the patient. So we will get the peak, the plateau, and the mean. We will also can see the pressure of the airways and the pressure of the alveoli in the cycle. And when we get the graphics, you will understand this. Now the pressure will be resulted from the set parameter, but also from the patient interaction with the variables. These are the interaction of the patient depend on the compliance. 
and airway resistance. Question? So when we have high airway pressure, because we are not setting the, uh, the, the pressure, it's usually resulted from high tidal volume and high peak flow. And high peak flow usually resulted from poor compliance. And poor compliance is usually when there is sticky alveoli or there is fluid in the alveoli or the patient is fighting the ventilator. In this situation, you get poor compliance. And if you get poor compliance, you get high peak flow. And poor compliance when the alveoli become thick, when the surfactant are deficient, for example, or there is fluid in the alveoli that neutralize the surfactant. We also uh, might get the um, might get it from increased airway resistance, such as in asthma or bronchiolitis. Now, we also said that a combination of conditional variables, phase variables, and Type of breath will give us the mode. So I'm going to move this to the end. Because right now this will be confusing. Okay. I think this is better. Now you can see that I did not talk about pressure limited because we will deal with the pressure limited all the time. Now the mode of the ventilation, there are many modes of ventilation. There is first called conventional mandatory ventilation. Conventional mean the rate is 60 and below while high frequency when the rate is more than 60. And we have also another mode called assisted control. And some people call it SIPPV. Assisted control or AC mode mean we will see only two breaths, the assisted and the mandatory. And the mandatory means the control. And the conventional mandatory ventilation can be used with the two types of ventilation, the volume limited and the pressure limited, or volume control and the pressure control. Does the ventilator trigger the patient? Yes, because in control, it's a ventilator because it's mandatory. So both in both type of ventilation, the ventilator will trigger. And in both type of ventilation, the patient will never trigger. The reason is in conventional, it's only mandatory. It's only the machine delivery. How we cycle, and you guys remember that the cycling, either time or volume or flow. And most of time, we cycle by pressure and time. We rarely use volume trigger. The volume trigger is only when you have volume limited. So we trigger by volume. And because volume limited is only used by anesthesia, we don't use it. So the cycling or the termination of the breathing in conventional can be volume in volume limited ventilation and can be time in a pressure limited ventilation. Now, is it mandatory the type of breath? Yes, because we have only conventional mandatory. 
Do you have assisted? No, because it's only mandatory. Do you have spontaneous? No, because it's only mandatory. Any question about this mode? Conventional mandatory or controlled mandatory ventilation or conventional mandatory ventilation. Any question about it? The assisted control also can be of two types of ventilation, volume limited and pressure limited. Because it's assisted and controlled, then it's um, um, it start by the patient and continue with the machine. So does the ventilator trigger? Yes, when we give the control or the mandatory. Does the patient trigger? Yes, when we give assisted. How we cycle? In volume limited, we cycle by volume, but in pressure limited, we cycle by time. Do we give mandatory? The answer is yes, in both volume and pressure. Do we give assisted? Yes, because it's assisted. Do we give spontaneous? Do we allow spontaneous? The answer is no. When there is spontaneous, it will not be, uh, we will not see spontaneous. The reason, because whenever the patient breathes, the machine will help. That's why we say assisted. So we never see spontaneous in assisted control. And the other name is SIPBV. Any question? Questions? Okay. Now the intermittent mandatory ventilation mode also can be volume limited and it can be pressure limited. When it's pressure limited, the I, it's also called APRV. APRV vent mode, or also called airway pressure release ventilation. This is only adult mode, but I'm going to explain it to you, just in case you see it in adults. We rarely use it. I never used it in my life. So in this mode, you guys remember that we have PEEP and then PIP. The PEEP is the low and the PIP is the high. In airway release ventilation or airway positive, airway pressure release ventilation, the PEEP is the high and we only relieve it during inspiration. So it will be a reverse of the standard ventilation. So the PEEP look like PIP and the PIP look like PEEP. So in intermittent mandatory ventilation, does the ventilator trigger? Do you guys remember what's trigger? Anybody remember what is the trigger? Do you hear me? Do you guys hear me? Or I'm talking to myself? No, doctor, we yes, hear doctor. you. Yes, doctor, yeah, you. Okay, so anybody remember what's trigger? A trigger is how we start ventilation. How we kick off the breathing in. So if it's assisted, we will tell the machine that once the patient make one mil, help. Or once the patient will make 0.4 mil, help. Or the trigger can be uh, flow. So once the flow is in, trigger. So in IMV, does the machine trigger? The answer is yes, because it's mandatory. Does the patient trigger? Yes, because the spontaneous will not be supported. So the patient can trigger, but it's IMV. There is no S, no synchrony. So the baby can breathe again as the ventilator. How we terminate again is again in volume limited by volume and in pressure limited by time. Do we see mandatory? Yes. Do we see assisted? Yes. 
when it's mandatory? And do we see spontaneous? The answer is yes. What about PSV? Or the PSV, because it's a pressure support, it's only one mode. There is no volume control in PSV. It's only pressure limited or pressure control. Because it's a flow cycle and flow a trigger, the machine measure the previous flow. And if the patient achieves certain flow, the machine will help. However, it should be within a period of time. So we leave the machine for a period of time. And that's why when we put inspiratory time in PSV, we put it long, just to give time for the patient to drive the ventilator. How? When the machine measure the previous and compared to the next. And we give the machine a percentage less than 25. So we tell the machine, once the patient achieved 25 of the previous hell, or we can put it at 50 or 75, but usually we put it at 25. So you can see here, it's a flow cycle, not a time cycle, but it's not like without law. It should be within the patient can cycle the ventilator within a certain period of time. And that's why we give it a little bit long time. So usually when there is PSV, we put the, um, uh, the inspiratory time at 0.4 or 0.5, just to give time, just to give time for the patient to drive the ventilator. So in PSV, we have only the breathing strategy or the type of ventilation is pressure limited. Does the ventilator trigger? No, only patient trigger. How we trigger? It's a combination of a flow, pressure, and time. Does the ventilation breathe? No, because it's only assisted. We never give. There is assisted? Yes. Is there is a spontaneous? No, because all will be supported. However, also sometimes there we use a combination. So we can put a backup rate. So you can provide PSV, but you should do at least, for example, 20, if we put it at 20. So if the patient breathes less than 20, so when we say 20, the 60, which is number of seconds in one minute, divided by 20 will be three seconds. So the ventilator will wait three seconds, and if there is no PSV drive, the machine will help. So usually we don't leave it like that because the patient can have apnea. CPAP, we know what is CPAP. Tube compensation is the number of about the centimeter of the pressure that needed for certain type of tube. We call it tube compensation. So what is CNV? CNV is control or conventional mandatory. So in controlled mandatory ventilation, the minute ventilation equal the tidal volume times the respiratory rate. And the patient, it's a controlled mandatory ventilation. So the patient will never support and everything is done by the ventilator. And therefore we use it when the patient is not breathing, such as when we have muscle paralysis or the patient is heavily sedated, or the patient is comatose. In the conventional mandatory ventilation, there is no change or no increment in mint ventilation. 
whatever we said, it will be giving the patient. So the intermittent or sorry, controlled mandatory ventilation, there is zero effort from the patient. And this is controlled mechanical ventilation or mandatory ventilation. So you can see here, is it This is wrong. Sorry, this is this was wrong. Okay, so now it's more clear. Can somebody tell me, is this volume control or pressure control? Pressure control. Volume, volume control? It? It's a volume control, yeah. It's volume control. Are you a nurse or a doctor? Are you a nurse or a doctor? Uh, I'm answers. a nurse. Yeah, so you see, when you have a clinical, you will learn it very easy. The reason for this, you can see have a different pressure. So we have the P peak and we have the plateau and we have the alveolar phase. In addition to that, the pressure, the, vo the flow is sustained. And if you guys remember, we said the volume is the time of flow. So the flow goes up, stay there, stay there, stay there, and then go down to achieve the volume. And you can see also the volume is limited. Okay, so it's a volume controlled ventilation. Now, is it mandatory ventilation? Yes, because we see only mandatory. You can see a perfect wave. So it's a controlled mandatory ventilation and it's volume limited. Question? We don't see spontaneous, we don't see assisted. We see no patient effort. Clear? And we see only the set rate. Any question? The assisted control, the AC, or some people call it SIPPV, the clinician determine the minute ventilation by setting the respiratory rate and tidal volume. However, the patient can increase the minute ventilation by triggering additional breath because the machine will give whatever you set and the patient effort. So for example, if you set the rate at 20, the machine will give 20. However, if the patient breathe 30, the machine will give 30. If the patient breathe 90 within the trigger, the machine will give 90. Unlikely, if you breathe 60, it'll give 60. However, if the machine baby breath, breathe 12, the machine will give 20 because we set the backup rate as 20. Clear? Questions? Now, this is the assisted control. No, again, this is wrong. Okay, so you can see this is volume control and it's assisted control. Why? Because we see the mandatory, the mandatory, but also we see assisted. So you can see only the interval is having a, um, we're only having the interval problem. Otherwise the waves are look like. Same, no change. It's all delivered by the machine. Here is mandatory, here is the mandatory, 
here is, is uh, assisted, so we don't see a spontaneous. But always you need to trigger. There is a trigger here. It's a flow trigger here. Question, and you can see the volume are controlled. However, the pressure are not controlled. So this is volume controlled, assisted control. Question? Yeah, Dr. Wallah, I have a question. Go ahead. Why there's any not a regular? Any... Because this is assisted oh. and mandatory, assisted and controlled. Okay? So this is the control. This is a control. But in between, patient has a breath and the machine supported it. That's the irregular rate. If you remember this, uh, you see when the patient, here is oh one breath, God. nothing there. Patient is not breathing because it's mandatory only. In this one, it's assisted and controlled, the mandatory and the assisted. So they gave the mandatory, they gave the mandatory, but also the assisted. So if the rate is, let's say here 20, this will give like 22 because the patient has two breaths above the mandatory, which is the assisted. So we have 20 mandatory and two assisted. Clear? Yes, it's clear, thank you. And it's a volume control. Either way, the assisted and the control are volume control. The intermittent mandatory ventilation it's exactly like AC control because it has mandatory. And the patient is also able to increase because the patient are able to take spontaneous. However, this spontaneous will not be supported because it's in only mandatory. And it's different from CMV because in CMV there is no spontaneous, while here there is spontaneous. However, it will not be supported, so there will not be assisted. Clear? And you can see it has no S, so it's not synchronized. So the patient can have spontaneous, but at the same time, the machine will deliver mandatory. They never, they might fight. They might not be in harmony. So intermittent mandatory ventilation, it's the same of assisted control because we set the rate and the tidal volume. However, the patient can increase the mandatory ventilation by taking spontaneous, but it will not be assisted. Okay, so it's different from CMV by the patient has a spontaneous that is not supported. And it's different from AC because in AC there will be assisted while in IMV there is no assisted. The problem with IMV, it will not be synchronized. So you can see the mandatory, you can see the mandatory and you can see the spontaneous. And you can see one of the spontaneous came over the mandatory. Sorry, also there is a mistake here. Okay, so you can see in mandatory, intermittent mandatory, there is mandatory, there is mandatory, but also there is spontaneous that is not supported. And it's different from SIMV that this occur together. So one mandatory and the same time one spontaneous. And you can see often the tidal volume is affected. Do you guys understand what's intermittent mandatory? So intermittent mandatory, it's exactly like AC, but instead of assisted, it will be spontaneous. And it's also like conventional mechanical ventilation. However, in conventional mandatory ventilation, you will not see spontaneous because the patient is not breathing. 
The SIMV is the synchronized IMV. It's exactly like IMV, but the spontaneous will never occur over the mandatory. It's exactly the same. Okay? So if you look at the graph, I don't know why this mistake happened. So now you see the difference between SIMV and IMV. So mandatory, mandatory, spontaneous, spontaneous, spontaneous. But you can see the ventilator adjusted it to come together. So they don't fight each other. When they come together, the ventilator synchron synchronize it. So you can see mandatory, mandatory, spontaneous, spontaneous, but when spontaneous came over the mandatory, they will never fight each other. They will not be in this harmony. Is that clear? Uh, sorry, Doctor, just uh, repeat this slide. This slide, if you Easy. remember, we said IMV show us mandatory and spontaneous. Correct? And you remember, if you go back, if you look at this, we have mandatory, we have mandatory, we have spontaneous, okay. spontaneous. Okay, I know, this, this yeah, synchronized. So when they came uh, together, uh, the mandatory and the spontaneous, you can see they fought together. While in this one, you can see when they come together, the ventilator synchronize it. And you can see as if there is no spontaneous. It's like my like mandatory because the ventilator um, synchronized the mandatory with the spontaneous. Clear? Okay? Mm -hmm. Or you, it's okay. still confusing? That's uh, the confuse. It's confusing. The reason, again, you have a mandatory delivered by the machine, you have mandatory delivered by the machine, you have a spontaneous patient start, you have a spontaneous patient start. You have also here patient start. You can see it here in the floor. However, if you look at the yes. pressure, you don't see it. And the reason, because the machine synchronized the mandatory with the spontaneous. And that's the difference mm -hmm. between IMV and SIMV. In SIMV, the machine will not synchronize it. Oh. They will occur over each other. Okay. Tamam, tamam. Yes, yes, tamam. Again, SIMV. Okay. So what is the difference between this, this one, and this one? Anybody can tell me? You can see this is a pressure control. You see the, the beautiful airway alveolar and the flow too in the pressure disappear. Okay, and you can see the flow here, constant, it remain long time. I don't know how to do this. Okay, it will remain a long time. You can see here, the flow goes up, and then go down, goes up and goes down to provide pressure. And you can see the pressure is plateaued and you can see different volume. So this is a pressure control SIMV. The reason why it's SIMV, because we have mandatory and we have spontaneous, 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 mandatory, mandatory, spontaneous, spontaneous, different volume. So we can see spontaneous not assisted and we can see the mandatory. However, when they, they never occur over each other and because the pressure is plateau and they have the speed of the flow, the flow touch and goes down 
and you have two different diff different type of volume. So this is pressure limited, SIMV. Now, what is the difference between SIMV and AC? AC will never um, depend on the patient will depend on the machine because the machine will give the control and once the patient breathes, it will support. So it's more dependent on the machine. However, the SIMV, there is the mandatory and the spontaneous because it will never support. And therefore it has more contribution of the patient. Now the pressure limited ventilation, this actually should go back in here. I think somebody played with my slides. It should be here, actually. Now, the pressure limited, the ventilator, the clinician set the PIP, the IE, the respiratory rate, the PEEP, and leave the tidal volume to be determined by the interaction of the patient and the machine. Real slide out in Sarbata. Okay. So pressure limited ventilation. We set everything and leave the volume to be determined by the interaction of patient and the machine. Okay. Now this is, if you guys remember, the airway pressure release ventilation. You can see that the PIP become the PEEP and the PIP become the PEEP. So you can see long PIP and very short PEEP. Okay, so it's the reverse of ventilation. Pressure PSV, we've talked about PSV. So this is PSV. So is this a pressure control or volume control? A volume control? Uh, volume control. It's a volume control, you, get, you are sure? Because if you remember, we said first, pressure control will never be volume, always pressure. That's one. But also if you look at the flow, it goes up and then down. It never stayed. And you can see the pressure are truncated mm -hmm. and the volume are variable. So this is yeah. pressure control PSV <laughs> because PSV always are pressure control. Because remember the pressure is the speed of time or sorry, the, the, the speed of flow and the volume is the time of the flow. So once you say that well, the flow stable, then this is a volume control. Once you see the flow goes up and go down quickly, then probably you're dealing with pressure. And you can see the pressure are controlled here because truncated and the volume are various sides because it's not controlled. So this is PSV uh, and pressure control. And this is a summary of all the modes, okay? Now, this is also will help you to understand. So the more the patient contribute, this is the black color contribute of the patient. So you can see in controlled mandatory ventilation, it's all by the machine. In airway pressure release ventilation, there's more contribution for the patient. Assisted control, mainly the machine, but some contribution of the patient. SIMV, almost 50-50. IMV, mostly by the patient, and PSV almost always are delivered by the patient. 
Sometimes we can combine. So we can give what we call it ACVG. So assisted control volume guarantee. So it's assisted. So we're controlling the pressure and controlling the volume. That's why we call it pressure limited volume control. And we can combine PSVVG and that's the, they call it physiological ventilation. So it's pressure support guided by the patient because the flow cycle and it's a pressure limited, but also it's a volume guarantee. And I am done with this session. Okay, now when we do the next session for the nurses, we will continue to um, play with the machine and no more model and no our uh, device. And hopefully next time we'll have the neonatal ventilator so we can play with the neonatal ventilator. And I'm still waiting 